Uh, yeah, hey everybody, it's me, uh, Boltman. I'm here to play a match. I don't have a lot of things to talk about. It's Coho. Uh, let's let's just do it. I'm, I just woke up from a nap because I kind of forgot about this match. Not going to lie, but it's all right. Let's do this. All right, new league, go and no record. Um, playing Boatman, uh, rough bit of a draw, but you know Boatman's a good player. Um, no, ki no crown, no gimmick, uh, no bullshit. Uh, I, I want to win something, so uh, if I could beat Boatman one on one, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I like Boatman, uh, obviously, uh, but I think this is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good match. So. Welcome, everybody, to the brand new Trivia League here on Film Nerd TV. This is the Movie Trivia Challenge. I'm your host, Hunter Chambliss, and I have a very special co-host with me. It's Luca Madden. How are you doing? You should point that way. What the, what the fuck is up? Uh, yeah, no, I'm doing good. Um, I always like to see um, these two sassy, bitchy bastards going at each other like old wives. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a fun, fun night. Um, they're both pretty talented, pretty smart people. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they get up to. Oh yeah. So, um, I'm going to explain kind of how the movie tree challenge is going to work for. Oh, thank know, God. I have no idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we made this for fans, for movie fans who really like, I love the guys at Full Metal. I love the guys at Multiplex. But people like me, I love movies, but I would never, I'm never getting a win there. We made, we made these for people who haven't seen a lot of movies. Pretty much. Um, now, but how it works is we let the competitors pick four categories each for round one as their strength rounds. Round number two, they get two rounds for the wheel. And then round three is our new betting round, which is one to three points instead of the normal zero to two points. So, um, without further ado, let's get into the introductions. Introducing first, he is known as the Little Boat, Caleb Boatman. I'd like to point out this match has been canceled due to the coronavirus. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're done. This is, a pub this is a public gathering of more than 100 people all watching on stream. Yeah. <laughs> and his opponent, I think he's still the king, Caleb Ho Ho. This match is canceled due to coronavirus because of 100 people in the room, but those 100 people make up Caleb Boatman's ego. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, this is all going to be fun. All right, guys, this is how it works. Round one is the normal whiteboard round. You get eight questions. Uh, you write down the answer. You have 15 seconds. If you get it right, you get one point. Nothing happens if you miss it. You guys understand? Yeah, let's go. All right, uh, Luca, I will take odds. You will take evens. Cool. All right, guys, so your first question is in the category of Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. And your That's question is... Yes, it is. Or nine. In terms of release order, on what spaceport city do we first see Obi-Wan use his force to trick a guard? Starting off with a little toughy one here, but... Considering someone picked this as their strength. Repeat the question. All right. So that's Kale's first repeat. Your question is, in terms of release order, on what spaceport city do we first see Obi-Wan use his force to trick a guard? I think at this point, considering like just how much Star Wars stuff has been asked, you kind of have to ask these like very specific, like, you know, nissy gritty questions for the mm -hmm. challenge at all then. And by the way, you each have three pieces of one challenge. Caleb now has two. Five. Both got their boys in. Good to go. Yeah. Four. Three. Two. One. Let's start with Coho. Uh, precisely. That is correct. There for we go. Um, that's correct for one point. All right. Mm -hmm. Question number two in the category of 1970s. Uh, in The Exorcist, 
what does the girl Reagan name her imaginary friend? I absolutely love this movie. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant movie. Linda Blair mm -hmm. is stunning in this. Dude, she gives a star making performance like nobody's business in this movie. And fun fact, Linda Blair and the Exorcist is my imaginary friend. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pins down Boatman. Mr. Howdy. Ooh, that is incorrect and in coho. I said Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Captain Howdy. Oh, Captain oh. Howdy. Yeah. One word off for Boatman. <laughs> All right, guys. Your third question is in the category of Marvel movies. In the opening credits for Deadpool, who does the credits say the movie is directed by? I get that opening credits trivia out there. Oh, yeah. Those credits are something special, though. I mean, Deadpool's one of those movies that, like, obviously does the matching thing very hard, and I like a lot of the jokes that it does with the form of the film. It does a really good job of adapting it to, to uh, the cinematic format. Yeah. Still not a very good movie. Or Three, two, one. Pins down, Coho. An overpaid tool? That is correct. That is correct. I had a word and it said an overpaid douchebag. Oh. Close All right. No <laughs> point. Get a point in spirit. Yeah, you do. All right, guys. In the topic of 1980s, in The Breakfast Club, what is the topic of the essay that the principal makes the Breakfast Club write. What is the title of the essay? Again, another John Hughes movie that is an absolute classic. One of my favorites, actually. I think it's probably up there with like Home Alone in terms of movies that John Hughes was involved in. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not huge on the 1980s coming of age thing, but I do think The Breakfast Club is a movie that does it really, really well. Better than like Five Times yeah. or Rich Behind and stuff like that. One. Pins down, Boatman. Uh, who you think you are. That is correct. correct. I said, and how do you see yourself? All right, we are tied to a piece. So close and yet so far. Going into comic book movies, which is non-Marvel or DC. In The Mask, what weapon does The Mask turn a balloon into? And we need a specific answer. The Mask, this a is movie that is completely opposite of the comics, but I love it the same. I mean, the comics are great. The comics are violent as hell, but I think this is like Jim Carrey's best comedic role, I would say. Um, yeah. Very, very funny. You're not wrong with that one. Five. Four, oh, fuck that sequel. Then. Two. I agree. One. Pins down. Coho. A Tommy gun? That is correct for one point. Boatman. Tommy gun. We are tied three apiece. Turns it into legendary boxer Tommy Gunn from Rocky V. Yes. All right, guys. In the category of war movies, who plays Desmond Doss in 2016's Hacksaw Ridge? Another fantastic movie with a director that had some controversy in the past. <laughs> fuck Mel Gibson. Take every opportunity I can to say fuck Mel Gibson. Fuck. Um, this, is one of those, this is one of those Oscar contending movies that I'm like, Fairly fine with having been slightly forgotten. Pins down, Boatman. Andrew Garfield. That is correct for one point. Coho. The great Andrew Garfield. That is correct. Four piece. We move on to your pent ultimate question. The category of the Conan brothers. In No Country for Old Men, how did the gas station owner who Anton Chigurh meets Come to own it. Thank you to uh, Schmodown superstar Chance Ellison for helping me with this question. What a scene. What a scene. Ah, uh, head, heads or tails? The uh, thing with the, the candy wrapper, it's so oh, good. Dude, he... Top 10, top 10 bowl cuts in movies. <laughs> Five, four, three... Two, one, pin down, pins down, coho. 
Uh, he and his wife inherited inherited it from her father. Yeah, I'll accept it. I'll his father-in-law owned it. He married into it. The exact yeah, married into it. Yep, I'll accept both answers. Five. All right, guys. In your final question, right? Yes. In the category of the 1990s, in the Truman Show, who plays the director of the show, Christoph? Another great Jim Carrey. Incredible Jim Carrey movies. Yeah. This might might be my favorite. It's a toss-up between this and Eternal Sunshine. Um, Yeah, I was about to say that Eternal is one of my favorites. Five, four, three, two, one. Pins down Boatman. Ed Harris. That is correct. And Coho. Ed Harris. That is correct. We are tied at six apiece. Right on both counts. Round two works like this. We'll bring up the wheel from Whittleside.com. There are eight categories, um, and Coho will spin first. Uh, he will spin the wheel. Whatever it lands on, he can choose to spin again. But after that, he must stick with it. There are uh, four questions worth two points apiece. You can offer multiple points for one, and there is stealing. You guys understand? Yee. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let me bring up the wheel. It's that damn wheel, as Clark Wolf would say. All right, and the categories are <clears throat> DC movies, classics, MCU, Disney animation, movie release dates, recent releases, and opponent and spinner's choice. Are you ready? I will bring honor to Smurfs everywhere. Let's do this. Your spin is in. It lands on classics. DJ, spin that shit. <laughs> Your last spin is, and you must stick whatever it lands on. It lands. You are going. Oh, God, God damn it! <laughs> you are taking son that. of a bitch. Yes. That's literally the only thing on the wheel I don't like. <laughs> literally the only thing on the wheel I don't like. Um, Luca, will you give him some of his questions in the category of classics? Son of a bitch. Give him the questions in classics. Sure thing. Okay. Caleb Coho, your first question. In Sydney Lament's yeah. 12 Angry Men, one of the jurors wants a decision to be made quickly so he can go to a sporting event. What sport is he looking to go to? Baseball. Baseball is correct. For two points. Your second question. In Casablanca, Rick Blaine is a veteran of which war? World War One. That is incorrect. We're doing steals, right? Yes. Bowman, chance for a steal. World War Two. That is incorrect. The correct answer is the Spanish Civil War. Your third question. Uh, Maybe in one of your strengths. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's 1956 remake of The Man Who Knew Too Much won which Oscar in 29th Academy Awards? Remember, multiple choice is an option if you need it. Yeah, I'll take multiple choice. Okay, the options are Best Original Song, Best Supporting Actor, Best Adapted Screenplay, or Best Director? Repeat the options one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are Best Original Song, Best Supporting Actor, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Director. I'm going to go Best Original Song. Best Original Song is correct for a point. Hey, sir. Annie York. Your final question in the category category of classics is thus. Cecil B. DeMille's final film is a biblical epic that tells the story of what biblical character? Hey, Boatman, you see this movie yet? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's Moses. That is correct for two points. Ten commandments. Wow. Ten commandments is fucking not as, dope. Not as bad as it could have been for, for Caleb the second. No, not at all. So I have Caleb right now, only with 11, Boatman behind with six. But we go to his spin. Boatman, are you ready? I hope those are, these. my questions are as easy as co-hosts. Let's go. You missed your one steal opportunity. Don't oh, talk about how easy mine are. Oh, come on. All right, children. 
I don't ten and I want to turn this car around. Your spin is in. It lands on the MCU. I will spin again. All right. Your spin is in. You must take whatever it lands on, and it lands on Disney. Are you kidding Animation. me? Are you kidding oh, me? Ah, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I was in the questions in Disney Animation. <clears throat> All right, Bowman. Your first question in the category of Disney Animation is. In The Princess and the Frog, what instrument does the alligator Louie play? <laughs> <laughs> it's a trumpet! It's a trumpet! <laughs> <laughs> if I had got that, you know I wouldn't have missed it this time. <laughs> yeah. Your second question. <laughs> Bill Collins has soundtracked two Disney movies. One was Tarzan. What was the other? Brother Bear. That is correct for two points. Your third question. What is the name of Merlin's owl in the sword in the stone? Archimedes. That is correct for two more points. And finally, what was the first CG animated movie produced by Disney, not Pixar? Dinosaur. That is correct for two more points. All right, so after that uh, impressive and round two, what Roman got up. his strength for Coho and his strength for his spin. <laughs> we are uh, it's 14 for Boatman and 11 for Coho. But anything can happen in round number three, which is our betting round. And it works like this each competitor will hear. Five categories. They will bet between one and three points. Massive swing can happen. If you if you get it right, you gain those points. If you miss it, you lose those points. You guys understand? Oh, poor boatman. A betting round that I'm not here to help you for? Let's do this. All right. Um, so, Luca, you will take odds, correct? I'll take odds. So how does it work? I tell yes. them the categories and they bet, then I ask the question. Okay, yep. guys, your first question is in the category of scores and soundtrack. Place your bets. The dreaded scores and soundtracks. The Bad very, very three. welcome scores and soundtracks. Three, two, one. Boatman. I'm going to bet two. Two. Two points. Right, two for each of them. Okay. We got both the beds in? Sorry, but the stream yeah. is really lagging for me, so I don't know. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, your question in scores and soundtracks is, who composed the score for the film Silence of the Lambs? Uh, one of my... Might be my fav my top five favorite horror movies. I have fallen out of love with the movie, but the score is still excellent. Oh, it's especially the the prison guard beaten scene. Ah, oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Pin down, Coho. I believe it's Howard Shore. That is correct for two points. Boatman. It is Howard Shore. I did not have Howard Shore. I very good. Oh, interesting. So we're Boatman losing two points. Coho takes the lead, thirteen to twelve. <clears throat> The next category you can bet points on is sports movies. And somewhere, Kidnap Sock is screaming with excitement. It's between one and three? Yes, one and okay. three points. Five, four, three, two, one. Coho. One. One point and both hands. One. One, one. All right. Your question. Who plays Cassidy? The love interest of Randy in the movie The Wrestler. <clears throat> Again, Wait. I had to put my love of pro wrestling somewhere in here. Man, what a not, movie not, this was. Not very kind but, to the sport, though. Fun fact Nicolas Cage was originally look looking to play the role of Randy Ross. I thought you were going to say Nicolas Cage was supposed to be the love interest. And I was like, I wish that was, that was the case. <laughs> I would watch that. <laughs> 
Boatman. Marissa Tomei. That is correct for one point. Marissa Tomei. That is correct for one point. 14 to 13. All right, Luca, give him the their next, next category. Next category is horror slash thriller. Horror and or thriller. I did that one on purpose. And because we're here, um, we're going to cheap plug. Uh, up next, we are doing a live version of the Horse Cup podcast with me and Luca talking about The Shining. So check it out. Five, four. I've three, never seen it. One. <laughs> Pin Dallas, start with Coho. One. All right, one point and Boatman. These questions have been the hardest, so I'm going to bet one. All right, one apiece. Cool. Uh, in the category of horror thriller, what actor plays the role of Will Bloodworth in the Final Destination films? Um, I think he missed a question, but I missed a few. What iconic horror actor plays the role of of William Bloodworth in the Final Destination films. There we go. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're asking a question about a famous person. Yeah. Pretty much. Five, four, three, two, one. Pins down, Coho. Is it Robert Unglund? Is incorrect. And Boatman. Sean William Scott. That is also incorrect. Correct answer is Candyman himself, Danny Todd. Oh, Danny Todd. Death is coming for you. All right, guys. Your next question to bet points on is the DCEU. I still have uh, you, have left? you have two questions left. You have this one and then the, the final question. So I have uh, Coho with 13 and Boatman with 12. 55, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boatman. I have a feeling Coho's going to get that big, so I might as well try to keep pace at least two. Two. Two, two. two, two. Okay. Two, two. Your question is Who plays El Diablo in Suicide Squad? Ugh. Whoa. God, I, I can't, you I can't escape this stupid this, fucking movie. This movie is not great, but I can't say I didn't enjoy Margot Robbie and Will Smith's chemistry. <clears throat> Repeat. Sure, but like, just watch the Who was that? Uh, mm -hmm. Alright. So your question is, in the DCEU, who plays El Diablo in Suicide Squad? Dude, Birds of Prey was really, really good. Love the shit out of Birds of Prey. Take all the things <laughs> I like about suicides. Well, none of it. <laughs> the answer's in five, four, three, two, one. Uh, Boatman. I hate betting rounds. <laughs> Tell us incorrect and coho. Jay Hernandez. That is correct for two points. 15 to 11, so this is still a match going into our final question. Is it 15 10? You bet two, right? Yeah, it's 15 10. Okay. Oh. Hey, guys. Uh, final question of the match is in the category of recent releases. Yep, recent releases. Coho, Films you know? that were released recently. Huh? You should First, make it interesting, Coho. Should I, make, should I make it interesting? Should I? You should. Should I? I at least make it go to sudden death if I hit new myths. Let's. No, go. I don't have any questions for sudden death. <laughs> Do it. Force it, Coho. Should I? Let's force it. Should I? <laughs> I don't know. I can't do we math, do have, right? We do have questions. We do have questions for sitting death. We just take questions from the other categories. I can't do math, right? Come on, bet two. All right, points. Boatman. Three. Okay. Three points for Boatman. Coho. I'll indulge my friend here. I'll put two. <laughs> All right, guys. Your final question. Okay, guys. Go ahead. In the film Knives Out, <laughs> the lawyer Alan Stevens is played by what Star Wars alum? Okay. <laughs> I could have I could have honestly bet three and take the risk, but I also was just like, ah. 
if they had said like if they'd put something like classic boat, I would just put one and ended it because there's no way tap out yeah. there. But they said recent releases, so I was like, oh, I'll indulge it. We'll go to sun death. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Coho. Frank Oz. And it's correct for two points and Boatman. Frank Oz. And yeah. your winner, Caleb the King. Ho -ho! With a score of, what is it, 17 to 13, correct? 12, I think. Oh, no, did you bet three? 13, yeah. Match in 13. This league history. I'm sorry? All time highest score match in this league's history. Yep. <laughs> I set the points record. I did it. At 13. Good job, bro. 17 <laughs> point record. Someone take it from me. All right. Um, let's get into the post match promos right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our second place runner up, Caleb, little boat boatman. How are you feeling, man? It is what it is. I mean, this is, you know, this, I, this league, like you say, it's just for fun. So it's not that big of a thing. You know, I'm sure Coho is going to, going to rub this in my face for a while, but you know, that's what he does. So it's cool. Um, you know, like I, I could, you know, say I probably my biggest mistake was betting on scores and soundtracks. It was a case of it's times where you don't bet and it's a super easy question. And you're like, dang, I could have bet, and now I made things mm -hmm. like, too close, and I didn't bet. And I, I bet was like, okay, Coho's gonna bet. It's probably gonna be something I know. I'll keep it. And it's just, it's, it's one that I just didn't know. Uh, I betting rounds in general movies really hard to navigate because one category, you know, they could sometimes be multiple categories, you know, and it's. Yeah. It's a case of also where, like, a lot of the categories that are on this wheel feed into, like, the coho strength, which are, you know, geek movies, where I'm not a, I'm not really a geek player. I don't play in any geek leagues, so that is what it is. But, you know, this was, this was a fun time. Um, yeah, good job, coho. Uh, you, you, you have navigated through classics okay, so, so good job. Um, actually, let's talk about that round, too. Because that round two was yours. You got both of your strengths. One for Coho, which was classics, and then Disney Animation for you. That must have – you must have been r riding high coming off of that round two. No, because I knew betting round was coming. <laughs> like, you, you, can't, you can't do that to yourself. You can't get like, oh, my gosh, wow, I'm doing so great. Because then you get cocky and then you lose. Like that betting round is just my least favorite round, especially because it's it's just so chance based. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um. So while I have you here, and you are the first competitor to actually compete in this league, what do you think of the new format? Do you think it's fun? Do you think it could work? Any anything I, you want to say about this new league? Yeah, I, it's definitely interesting. I think I think there are some tweaks. That could be made, but overall interesting. I think they're they're the the categories are interesting, and I think that's something where I I really like the format. I think that's the, something that maybe could be tweaked in the future. I, this is the first match. Yeah, like, nothing's perfect out of the gate, as maybe the way cate like categories. But I like the idea of okay, you basically draft categories for round one. Mm -hmm. I think that's super fun and super interesting, and I like that a lot. All right. Yeah, because that's something that, that we were thinking of as, like, these are categories that people can study, and especially if it's from the list of questions that we have or the list of categories that we have. It's something that you can see. Both categories can see it's fair on both ends. So that's why we kind of went with this way. It kind of makes it more fun, adds a new element, new twist to it. My yeah, like I think it definitely is interesting. It's going to be great for players who play in both general movies and geek. Like mm -hmm. I think that's where whereas I think also like that's the thing where geek is like a lot of the categories. So it's and really with the exception of now Disney Animation and Pixar, it's all the it's all the categories that you actually have the specific movies where everything mm -hmm. else very broad. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So is there anyone that you want to face next or are you I think whoever? All right. I love the attitude. Uh, but, uh, nothing to hang your, your uh, head on I me. Mean, 13 points is amazing in most, uh, leagues that would have gave you the win, but that betting round can happen. Um, that's been little boat. Caleb Boatman will be right back with the winner. The King, Caleb Coho. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the King, Caleb Coho. Uh, you scored 17 points. You now hold the highest record in the league after one match. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I'm going to hold that record with honor. Yeah, you should. <laughs> how are you feeling? Pretty good. Uh, me and Boatman came out of this with the exact same accuracy. We were pretty even this entire match. Mm -hmm. uh, it just comes down to betting, and that's a round that I – uh, have a lot of experience with. I run a league that has a betting round, so like um, I play it consistently. I see it uh, just about every day. People play it and how to work it, so I understand betting. All I had to do was adjust point values up a spot and how to yeah. do the math that way. Um, and I, I figured I was pretty screwed going in around three until you said the words betting round, and I was like, oh, <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> we'll be okay, because then uh, that's something that just isn't Boatman's strong suit. Yeah, and that's why me and Boatman work so well together over at Multiplex because I know how to do it, and he knows everything else. And so the two of us kind of—it was fun to just kind of stretch our legs and 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 face off. Uh, but Boatman's excellent. Uh, he got he got bit by a couple geek categories. Um, I got bit by horror <laughs> twice. It's the only category I missed two questions in. Uh, but and classics in round two. <laughs> Oh, classics around two came up. I thought I was screwed. I didn't. I you said twelve acre men. I'm like, okay, okay, we'll be okay. And then Ten Commandments came up. Like movies I had actually seen had come up. That yeah. was the lucky my lucky break. I had literally seen every movie that you brought up, and then there was an Oscars. Any plot related thing I'd seen yeah. except for the one that I missed. So I was like, cool, awesome. Yeah. Uh, that helped me out a lot. But about getting Disney animation, I was like, crap, <laughs> we're we're gonna be down. So then the betting round thing was was really cool and helpful um but yeah, yeah i i had a lot of fun um yeah you know uh um, well i have you here and since you did kind of come up with that betting round in the in your um fandom division how do you think going from zero to two to one to three was that a good change that we made because I, I always thought of like if you're gonna bet something at least make it a bet make it where you can at least lose one point at the lowest that way it's feels like a true betting round. Um, I kind of like the... I, I mean, I, I'll obviously have bias towards the thing I made because of yeah. the, the <laughs> zero and the strategy that comes in. Do I bet here? Do I not bet here? Do I conserve my points and how that plays? When you know that if you get a category that you're bad at, you know you're going to lose a, a point, so minimize your losses sort of thing. Um, I like the idea of three. I kind of... That was fun to have that. I, I'm, I never bet three. <laughs> I was yeah, way yeah. too scared to bet three. Because <laughs> if a, uh, even D, I, I had three on my board for DCU and I changed it to two at the last minute just in case it was something really deep plot related. Yeah. And then and then it was who plays uh, El Diablo and I was like, yeah, should have had three. Uh, but yeah, like I, it's fun. It's a fun betting round. Um, yeah. it, like Boatman said, this league is not necessarily one that's going to benefit players like him that are more movie centric this is it's a good balance it's perfect for people like me like if you ever have 50 like you see 50 50 matches um i'm a player that benefits in that situation because i do both a lot so um that just kind of came my way boatman's really good at both he doesn't give himself enough credit when he's when he was like oh best is people like oh it boatman can do really well in this league too uh but um i think this is a fun league i had a lot of fun so all right sweet um that's something that we are really going to try to push forward as this league goes on this year is it's all about having fun. I mean, records will matter because that's who you are play next, the championship, things like that. But if competitors could come in and have fun, that's really what we're, we're aiming to do. Speaking of a uh, next, what's next? Who's next? Is there oh. another debuting player that's coming up? Like what, what are my options? Talk to me. The next match, and I'll go ahead and uh, announce it, uh, bring up this dude, because he's a part of the next match. It's going to be Luca Madden taking on Dominic Rizzi. Bring me Rizzi! <laughs> bring me Rizzi! Uh, I, I love the play. He's not going to get to you. It's usually, it's usually, it's usually winner takes winner, so like... 
True. Oh, we, that's true. We've never actually Rizzy's gotten. Not, Rizzy's Rizzy's not going to get that. Fun. That's that's fair. But Rizzy is <laughs> Rizzy is my white whale that I've I've. I don't want to say I've beaten because I don't know when things come out in the relation to this, but I've played and I have beaten Info Metal for sure twice. <coughs> so, coronavirus. Apologies. Uh, but <laughs> I would love to play Luca, but Rizzy is the white whale that I need to skewer for the 18th time. Uh, so, bring me Rizzy, bring me the belt. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so. The next match is going to be Luca versus Dominic, and that's going to be a fantastic match. I'm going to be great. Super looking forward to that one. Um, but thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else you want to plug? Anything else you want to say before we check out Multiplex? I live there now. That's <laughs> everything's canceled. Come to Multiplex. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't go to your. You can't go to the theater. You can't go to your concerts. Come play. The <laughs> Come watch your list sucks. Come hang out. It's fun. Definitely, definitely. Uh, check out Multiplex. They're doing fantastic stuff down there. Uh, that's been Caleb King Coho, and we we'll right back at the desk. All right, Luca, what a match that was. What a first match to open up this league. Um, and you might have to be facing the King up next. How are you feeling? I mean, I mean to be fair, I faced, I faced Caleb, I think, in one trivia thing ever, which was a music trivia thing, and I, like, completely swept the floor with him. Um but like Caleb's an impressive guy. He's got an impressive uh, knowledge of movies, and I think that once I like, wipe the floor with with good old Dom Rizzi, um, I, he's he's going to be fun to face. Um, it'll be a nice you know second second hurdle on my way to this whole championship. Oh, okay, I like it. I like the confidence. Love the confidence. Of course, that's um, all I have. <laughs> from Mr. Luca over there. Um, but, uh, again, we cannot overlook Dominic Rizzi, man. Um, impressive player, but... Oh, I sure cannot... can. <laughs> I cannot wait. I have, I have a look at about three or four times every day before breakfast. <laughs> um, but, as I was saying before, during the, the horror thrill round, uh, at 8 o'clock Central, that's 7 o'clock Eastern Time, we are go. Me and Luca are going live for the Horoscope Show, um, and we're talking about the Stanley Kubrick classic, The Shining. I'm so excited for that one. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really, really fun time. Um, I'm super excited to talk about Stephen Weber. <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> Hedge animals, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be great. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, so I'm super excited for what this league is going to bring. Um, of course, we have you versus Dominic uh, next. We're taping these two weeks in advance, so uh, you each are going to get matches every two weeks on this channel. Pretty much because it takes a long time to write questions, especially when you do, you know, two separate trivia leagues. But um, yeah, this was fun. This was a great debut match. Um, so thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you guys soon. Peace.